Good morning, friends. Look, it's rudder work. It's no longer vertical stabilizer stuff. Uh, yes, this is uh, the day that we started work on the rudder. These are the parts that I was working on in the last video. Um, super exciting day because it was something other than the vertical stabilizer. Um, it is also the day that I fell in love with the DRDD DT2. Um, yes, dimpling is now my favorite thing. Um, but this day, this was a long day. This was before we went on vacation. Um, we had to get a lot of stuff done. The beginning of this video, you got to see the trials and tribulations of countersinking. Um, and you got to see me give it a bit of a try before giving up. But at least I tried it. I just couldn't get the angle right. But uh, moving on, I did find other stuff that I like to do. Like use the super hot melty thing and uh, the, the dimpling. As long as it's marked on the piece of sheet metal or whatever I'm dimpling, which way needs to be up then uh, then yeah, I'm good. I am kind of scared to death about dimpling on the wrong side because you don't want to dimple on the wrong side and then go back and re-dimple because that just compromises the strength of the material, which is not a good thing when you think about multiple pieces of aluminum together hurtling through the air with people inside of it. So. I know that watching this, it seems like there's a lot of repeating of putting Clecos in and taking Clecos out and putting Clecos back in and taking Clecos back out. But it's, you want the precision, right? I mean, if you're going to be in a plane, wouldn't you want the plane makers to be as precise as possible? So along the edges of the skins are holes and in order to um, have better access to dimple and then rivet the holes, we had to remove strips of the blue covering uh, to have a clear work surface. So we got to use the super hot melty thing and run it down uh, the blue covering and melt it. So, hence the super hot melty thing. Uh, so we could then peel off uh, the covering. And so when you're peeling off this covering, I don't know if I've said it in a video yet, but it's kind of like peeling off um, sunburned skin or like when you're a kid and you put Elmer's glue all over your hands and peel that off. It's that kind of satisfying. I know, I really am a five-year-old at heart um, who builds airplanes, but I guess five-year-olds do that all five-year-olds dream of building planes right yeah um, I didn't know that I wanted to build a plane but apparently I did I actually really missed the process when we were in New Mexico and I'm not sure if it had to do with just the routine of it or what but I, I actually I did miss it um, so yep Robert's cutting the first piece the uh, the plastic bits off of that 
and then he started the second piece for me and I took over that one and he worked on edge rolling while I was undoing the second piece and then there was a bit of catastrophe that struck with the edge roller but it's okay it works now So yeah, when you see me occasionally stop to take photos, it's because the scene looks really nice, like this one, all shiny. And back to our regularly scheduled program of using the super hot melty thing and Tori removing the strips of the covering. And then we flipped it over and went ahead and removed the covering from the other side. Uh, this is Robert getting the second rudder skin uh, started for me so I could come along and uh, do my lines which I mean next to doing using the DRDT2 this was my my favorite part so far So the edge roller is used in order to give a better, uh, a more flowing seam or overlap when two pieces are put together. Um, it just kind of brings it down a little bit so you don't have a sudden... Um, oh, okay, so it adds rigidity to the edge so it doesn't bow up between rivets. Um, that's what Robert just explained to me off camera. But like I said, there was a bit of a malfunction with the edge roller. Um, but again, it was okay. Robert fixed it. And he got to make sparks when he was using the grinder. And he also did some welding, but I did not include that in the video because while I was putting this together, I couldn't find my shots of it. But as you can see, it is in working condition now and there are some shots of him using it. And so fast forward a little bit, um, all of the strips have been taken off of the skins. Uh, Robert is marking which way things need to be uh, dimpled for me, as well as doing some of the edging on edge rolling on these larger skins. So, yeah, pretty soon you're gonna see us move the uh, DRDT2 over towards the edge of the carpeted table so I can start my amazing dimpling project. So yep, all of those small pieces on the table behind me that I deburred and uh, worked on yesterday had to be dimpled. Uh, luckily it was just on one side though, so I didn't have to uh, worry about trying to make sure both sides of those angles were correctly dimpled. But 
it was a process and going on and on. And this table is actually like the perfect height uh, for me to do dimpling. And it's, it's a good thing that Robert and I are actually close to the same height so we didn't have to worry about um, like if it was going to be a huge uh, difference between the two of us doing this where it might be uncomfortable for someone. Um, but yep, so continuing on. And it, it took a while. It eventually, uh, you see it's, it's bright and sunny now. And by the time that we finished, it was, again, like 9.30 at night before we left the shop. So, yep, you see me going along, doing the riveting thing. No, not riveting, dimpling thing. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, so going along, dimpling, and these pieces, these large skins, um, some of the angles got kind of wonky, but that's okay. Um, we actually put the die to where the pointy part was on the top end that lowered in, um, hoping that, you know, moving the skin along while doing the dimpling we wouldn't you know get as many scratches in the skin but unfortunately that bottom piece did leave a couple of smaller scratches so it looks like uh, that's gonna have to be scuffed and primed but that's okay because that's just the inside of it you know the the exterior side is still all shiny So while I was doing this, you can see Robert diligently working on something on the table behind me, and he was working on the rudder access panel for the trim servo uh, that goes inside of the rudder. So that um, that work that he was doing uh, requires a lot of precision, especially you know when you're cutting into a piece. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of shots of that, but there are going to be some on video 10, which I'm going to start uh, downloading today since I've gotten caught up on videos that were sitting on my computer for the past week. Um, anyhow, so uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, like and subscribe if you don't mind, we would appreciate it greatly. And go ahead admire my dimples. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.